Do you ever look around your house? Your wife or significant other has assembled just a beautiful home, a place to raise your family and share a wonderful life with them. They've decorated in wonderful ways. They've made it look very nice. The problem is, is where are you going to play ham radio in a place like that? Well, I have an answer for you. Today on the Ham Radio Crash Course, we're going to put a ballon on it. And we're going to use a common household item that I'm sure pretty much everybody watching this has in their home to make an antenna. Let's get started. Like here, these decorations. What can I make an antenna out of? I don't know. More beautiful decor. Can I make anything into an antenna? These baskets, they have metal frames. These mugs with words all over them, not metal, but these copper cups are. Hmm. Walk around any home worldwide and you will inevitably find a curtain rod. Likely, you will find two curtain rods that are right next to each other. And guess what you can do with that? You can make a dipole. Now there's a couple of caveats I will mention as I go through my build. Likely the curtain rods are not very long, meaning if you want to get to the lower bands of HF ham radio, you're going to have to probably add wire. Second, curtain rods generally have two mounting brackets and a floating middle piece in the middle. That floating middle piece usually has two plastic inserts that prevent the all the metal from touching each other and becoming electrically sound as a part of an antenna circuit. So what you do for that, and don't let your significant other see you when you're doing this, is you sand the paint and finish off of the back where they can't see. And then you take a strip of wire, just bare wire. Stranded works pretty well because you can kind of lay them out. And you take a piece of packing tape, something invisible, and you tape it onto the rod. Do this after it's set up so that you know what the links are. And then just go ahead and just jump the connection between those metal pieces together so that they become one electrical piece of tubing or whatever it is. Also, I'll add a, a second thought on that. Most curtain rods are finished in some way. The paint usually, and the paint's real cheap <laughs> generally. It seems like the Walmart brands are the worst of that. You can sand off the paint, get a nice clean surface of metal to work on, and that's gonna make things really, really easy for you. Automotive connectors, let's talk about automotive connectors. Automotive connectors, you should just go down to Harbor Freight and buy one of those like 350 piece jobs that they got. I'll post a link in the description of something on Amazon that's cheap. Cheap is good here when you're making antennas on curtain rods. Basically, what you do with those is there's gonna be some kind of mounting screw somewhere. Likely that's connecting the rod to the mount. The mount could be wood, it could be metal, doesn't really matter. You're gonna use that screw to get that connection to the rod. So you'll make an automotive connector, two wires with eyelets on all sides that will connect to a ballon. I'm using a Radio Waves one-to-one -one, uh, ballon for a dipole, running any kind of dipole. Now ideally, you're gonna tune this or you're gonna put it on an analyzer and it's gonna be smack dab on the band that you wanna operate on. Reality is that's not probably going to be the case. So because it is a dipole, you do wanna try and get it onto a band. Likely 10 meters might be the band of choice for operation. It is the shortest, other than six meters, of the amateur radio bands and generally not that hard to, uh, to get set up uh, for an antenna. You're gonna want about eight feet, four inches or so total length on each side of the dipole. If you can't attain that with the, with the curtain rod you have in place, you can easily make a little stringer that hangs off of the ends of the curtain rods, which can be obfuscated, hidden from view from your significant other. And again, break out those automotive eyelets, crimp on the connector, 
and uh, just connect that on the end. There's likely another screw that you can tap into for that. Then with your analyzer, simply snip up the wire until you get it to where you want. So always cut it a little bit longer and then just snip it to the point that you want because tubing of, of curtain rod variety is gonna yield all kinds of different results when it comes to uh, the length of what it sees, the analyzer sees as the total length of the antenna. But here is the antenna. Do you see it? I put a ballon in between the two curtain rods. That got me to 38 megahertz or so. I dropped that down further by adding a bit of wire connected to the body, the mounting flange for the curtains, and that dropped me down to 15 meters. So this is resonant on 21.074 megahertz. How does it perform? Horribly. And let me preface this a bit. This antenna is going to work best as a receiver. If you wanted to listen to radio uh, in different rooms, you just wanted to tap into some coax, this is great for that. This is something that you can use for, for listening to all kinds of stuff, which is great. As a transmit antenna, though, it's inside your home. It's up towards the ceiling. I don't know what your roof composition is, but if you have some kind of radiant barrier underneath your roof, it's likely not gonna perform very well, but it will perform, assuming you put the work in. Is it the best antenna? No. Are there better options? Yes, but it's still a lot of fun. Uh, there's nothing better in my mind doing something in and around the home that um, your wife or significant other might chagrin at, but they can't see it and they don't know it's there. There's something rewarding in that, I feel. Okay, so here's the operating position. End table portable, connected to my antenna there on the left, to my 705 because it's resonant on 2174, into my GPD pocket. I just heard somebody calling CQ. I don't know if, uh, I think they're gone now. What time did they call? Uh, looks like a while ago, 234615, yeah. We might have missed our opening, but you can see I've been calling and calling. Not a lot of activity. So the dipole that I made is in the master bedroom and it is too short. So I added a bit of wire on both sides of the dipole. I feel like I added about three feet of wire. I was using a rig expert analyzer to kind of find where the sweet spot is. And I just kept trimming until I got it in place. I was able to make a contact on FT8. I was able to get picked up on the East Coast on Whisper, but hey, it's in the bedroom. So I can just set the radio up and just listen discreetly. Now I'll remind, uh, I did a video on uh, my favorite accessories for the ICOM IC705. And in that video, I talked about this, uh, which is the, this is the VS3 Bluetooth uh, dongle microphone and headphone device that works for the 705. With this, I can put earbuds in, I can operate the radio from, with the PTT. I can actually control the VFO up and down go up and down the frequency space. I can hide the radio somewhere and just listen to the radio and PTT as I need. There's a microphone on board um, and, and that works out pretty well. Cause you know, you're in the bedroom, you wanna be quiet. You don't wanna wake the wife up and you don't really want her to know that you made the curtain rods into an antenna. So I hope you enjoyed this simple build, thinking again about how you can make things into antennas, how you can have fun with radio in lots of different places. You know, you can't always expect to have the most efficient antenna, the best performing antenna. You can sometimes be working in areas where antennas aren't allowed, like in HOA. So it's always a good idea to try this stuff out so that you know what you're capable of. And the more you do it, the more successful you'll be, the more efficient the antenna will be, and the more fun you will have. I am Josh KI6NAZ. This video is part of a series that we did for Monday Night Ham Radio with some of the other YouTubers. There will be a link in the description to a playlist where you can watch some other great videos of people making things with antennas using the idea that I came up with not too long ago, the will it antenna concept. So make sure to go check out the rest of those videos. There are some very creative and very interesting antenna ideas that were discussed and built. Probably more successful than mine because they were likely outside. Regardless, check them out. I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun with it. 
Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and check out my live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific time. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. I'll talk to you later. See ya.